So I was recently picking up some uh, parts from a uh, parts Mercedes, and I noticed it had uh, a Sony CD changer mounted in the trunk, a little flip-down door. And when I looked at the magazine, I recognized that it's the same magazine that the Becker 10-disc changer in my car uses. Um, the mechanism in that is made by Sony, so that makes sense. The CD changer in my car is suffering from a, an apparently common problem where uh, one of these plastic drive gears down in the changer breaks and then it uh, stops working. So I've taken this one apart and I figured I'd uh, do a couple quick shots on how the mechanism on this changer works because it's actually pretty interesting. So as you can see, this thing has some problems for some reason that can't keep the disc spun up. But another interesting thing is this uh, audio injector, which does seem to be working. I've got it hooked up to a, uh, a radio here. And if I uh, turn it on, you can hear the audio cut out. So... My hope is to extract the broken part from this player, fix the Becker changer in my car, and then also do a bit of hacking on this box to use it just as a uh, line-in. Okay, that's enough of that. You can hear now the... Um, the... Uh, radio is started back up. I don't, there's apparently an infrared remote that goes with this that would probably let you select discs and things, but I don't have it. All I've got is uh, the uh, the hardwired items. You'll have to excuse the mess on my desk. So with the setup, I've got a this little power supply. There's this control box which injects the audio signal. Uh, well, it's an FM transmitter. There's a a switch on the side here for either 88.7 or 88.3, a power level, audio input, the uh, Unilink, I guess that's the Sony proprietary connection, power, the display, and then uh, on the changer you've got that uh, Unilink bus cable and audio. As a test I've got my uh, tablet hooked up and playing some uh, free hold music since this doesn't want to seem to play. So let's turn this on and see if we get anything. 
Yep. That is not NPR. And it actually sounds pretty decent. And if I turn this off, back to NPR. Cool. So now I just need to figure out how to get uh, this thing to switch. I'm hoping all I need to do is just uh, drive that relay because the change of control seems to be separate. Okay, I've gotten a little bit further on the uh, testing on this, so here's my setup. I've got uh, B plus running through that little orange light bulb in case I uh, make an error here I had to uh, recreate the ground plane with some clipping leads but you can see I can uh, light, light the lamp let me restart my audio file here I've got power turned on to this board and the CD changer and display are both disconnected. If I send power to the uh, relay which cuts in and out the uh, RF signal, you can hear, there's my test music, FM radio, test music, FM radio. So that means I can now use this board as a high quality FM injector so I can get a line input on the stock radio. Alright, modification complete. I've hooked up the coil of the relay to the uh, switched power that's fed to the this module, which I can uh, demonstrate if I connect this. You'll hear the relay click. And in just a moment, the music will start. There we go. Turn it off. Turn it on. First time you turn it on takes a moment, probably charging a capacitor or something. I'm not super concerned about it. I think that's going to work just fine. Okay, so I have the Becker CD changer apart here. Um, and this is actually very different inside from the Sony. It's actually, whereas the Sony just had the CD player part mounted on shocks, this has got the a whole subframe mounted on shocks. It's got this large gear arrangement with two um, two screw gears to move the the changer mechanism up and down. There's a lot more circuitry. This whole big piece on the back. However, I did just notice, if you look down in there, there's a worm gear sitting, uh, looking pretty lonely. So, hopefully, I can figure out where that goes. Uh, unfortunately, this is more difficult to power up outside of the car, because uh, there's a whole harness and uh, bus control system for this, so I'll see what I can do. I have to say this CD changer is very Mercedes. Just the the amount of electronics in here and and uh, gears and things, the shock mounting, it's just ridiculous compared to the uh, the consumer consumer CD changer. So all of this grief is caused by this little gear, and if you look at this end, I don't know if you can, you can probably just see that line in the video, that's where it's split. It goes on the motor right there, and that's what um, works the eject function and the function of, uh, I can get my finger in there, this arm, which is what pushes the disc 
back into the magazine. So the good news is that the gear on the consumer device looks pretty similar. Now the question is, how in the world am I going to get this far enough apart to get in there? Because I couldn't, this is as far as I could get the consumer one apart without breaking anything. So we'll see. So after more disassembly, I was able to loosen this piece up, remove that screw, and take the motor and gear out. And uh, turns out that it is a different diameter shaft than the motors in the, um, the Sony branded CD changer. In fact, everything about this Mercedes branded changer is just over the top bonkers compared to the uh, the Sony one like the uh, you saw on the Sony how to move to move the carriage up and down it uses this gear here and just runs this uh, platter up and down the Mercedes one has this large gear which turns three jack screws and it actually the the disc the the reed head is fixed it um, positions this this platter or carriage optically it's got an optical sensor on this big wheel and a uh, and a limit switch and it grabs the disc and then moves all the way down and the the reed head and spindle motor stay in a fixed place so this this runs all the way down and then clamps like that the even the door on this is amazing you know the the sony just had the little flip down door this has A dial cord and a little silicone damped uh, uh, gear there so that when you push the button the door opens nice and smooth. There's a little switch here that turns on two LEDs to illuminate the uh, inside of the changer so you can see the magazine. So um, I JB welded the gear on the motor We'll see how that holds up. Now I know how to take the, all this apart again. It's only uh, only a few screws. So now I'll uh, put this back together and see if it works. All right, that's all back together. So uh, hopefully that works out good. Here's just a quick shot to show that the two magazines are in fact the same. The model on that is it's a Sony XA-10B. While well, I had this uh, changer out I figured I'd show the connections on the back. You've got um, a power input, a switched power output, the connection that goes to the head unit, and then the connection that goes to the tuner. This sits in between the head unit and the tuner. Well, the good news is that seems to have worked. The uh, CD changer saw the magazine. It's doing the uh, magazine check right now. And it plays great. Yep. When I was fifteen, sixteen, when I was excellent.